Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today I'm here with Chesco who topped the CGU 1k event with Yamcha. So I know a ton of you guys wanted to see this deck list. I really do appreciate Chesco reaching out and, uh, you know, wanting to do the video. So how are you doing today, man? Doing good, man. Um, I was pretty happy that I was able to top. This was my first event uh, since Nationals last year. Um, so, I mean, it was good to see everybody. It was good to play cards again. Awesome. And you're from Virginia, is that right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. So you, you took what, like a five hour trip to, to New Jersey? It was seven, or? seven hours. Yeah. Wow. Very cool, man. And at least you walked yeah. away with something. That's pretty cool. So yeah, definitely. What made you want to play Yamcha? Cause obviously we haven't seen a lot of red yep. in the meta. So explain that to me. Yeah. So quick shout out to my friend, Jeff. Um, I, I pretty much always just played pan for a very long time. I was always playing red. Um, you know, when I, when I took my little break from the game and then I came back, I was like, oh, okay, let me play a red deck. And then at first I thought red sucked like everyone else did. But um, uh, my friend Jeff, we, we meet like once a week to me and everybody in my little area meets to play cards once a week. And he just brought this fun little Yamcha deck. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Like, let me work with this. And then me and Jeff ended up labbing for like a good month and a half and uh, ended up getting to a build that I really liked and I thought was actually playable. Awesome, sweet. So yeah, I think red's really good. Um, one of the things that I think brought red back, uh, yeah, and it, obviously this is like a, a one-time thing really because this is the mm -hmm. only set 10 tournament with the set with a set 11 ban list, right? So did right, you think yeah. that the the lack of black and more so like the lack of Koitsukai really made a difference for you? Um, no, not really. I mean, so I've always thought Vegex uh, was like a 50-50 matchup because they have their games where they just like, they hit their three to four cards on turn one and you just kind of snowball lose. But this deck does a really good do job mitigating the aggression. So it was never really, there were plenty of Vegex games that I could just win by uh, tanking up. Um, and as for Kutsukai, it really only hits, I don't I don't uh, main deck Topo, so Kutsukai really only hits the one Yamcha and you can kind of just choose not to play it. You have plenty of other options um, if they Kutsukai you. Gotcha, so we're definitely gonna talk about that later. No, no Topo the main deck, but for now let's yeah. go through the rest of the main. So this is our unison lineup. Uh, what brought you to these ratios? Because, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think you know, we don't see a lot of red in the meta, so I don't think people have necessarily, like, a standard of, okay, you mm -hmm. play this unison, this unison, and this unison. You know what I mean? So, yeah. how'd you get to this? Okay, so the three drop 20k unisons that come at, they basically have four markers the turn you play them. They are almost invincible. Like, it is so hard for people to clear them. Uh, I, my my uh, Shin Shenron was cleared one time all tournament, and I think the dude had to drop, like, six cards to clear it. So it ended up just being a huge plus anyway. Um, you play four Jaren because you you need your things to attack active mode battle cards to work with some of the uh, the burn cards in the deck. Uh, Jaren's plus one clearing uh, or uh, negging two things 15k. That's really good against like Raiders Warcry and Abune. Uh, his neg two uh, look at their hand, take away their counter play, and then go in for the game. Uh, you know, a lot of the times you neg two, count their combo, and just kind of swing for two damage. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. As for, so you, you play him, uh, you play Jaren at, I mean, uh, you play Shinron at four because he uh, works with the burn in your deck. Right. You just play the two Jaren. Jaren is actually amazing. There were so many games that I just thought Jaren was better because Jaren is better defensively. His auto is uh, when they play a battle card or a unison, just negative 10k. So there's little things that you just snipe, like any of the one drop double strikes, uh, like Kaba or Dodoria, you just snipe uh basil you snipe it uh any of the one drop skill listings you can just kill before they become an issue um and then him him having double strike is just good to have a 20k double striker static on board either for unisons or pushing damage and then so his activate battle um you actually it's ruled now that you cannot use it on your opponent's turn which uh makes it a, a, if you could use that during your opponent's turn i would play for him absolutely he'd be like the best right. unison um, but he, I mean, it comes up on your turn as well. Uh, you can just clear something like a Go Tanks or a, a War Cry or even an Abune. Um, so, a quick question. Even, or, or, so, 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 do they say that you can't use his activate battle even if he's not being attacked? Yeah, that's that was what I was told at the event. So, if they attack your leader, you cannot use Jaren's activate battle, for example. That's, so um, that's weird. what I was told at the event. Yeah, it, it sucks. I, I, I went into the event. I feel like that's wrong, could. but I don't know. I feel like that's yeah, wrong. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I honestly. You so know, trust that's me, I've, I've had wrong rulings so. at an event before, and it costs you games. But, I mean, luckily yeah. you're just able to top, so. Right, yeah. So, but it, I mean, like I said, if 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 that event, if that uh ruling ends up being incorrect and you can use his activate battle during your opponent's turn, then he gets like a hundred times better because at any point, you know, 25k is really big. Right. And you combine that with like the Wii Super combo, you can pretty much kill anything in the game 
Um, even like you could even kill the cells, you know, secret rare with Wolf Fang Fist, and then you activate battle his his effect. You could even kill the cell secret rare. So, so moving forward, we'll kind of see how the ruling is is uh, changed. It's a super powerful activate battle if you can use it on your opponent's turn. Right. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Like when you're, when he is being attacked, that makes sense because you don't exactly, get you yes. don't get a defensive step. But right. um, when anything else is being attacked, that's that's really strange. But I mean, yeah, that was that was my thought going into the event. But I mean, it, it actually didn't come up at all during the event. Luckily, I mean, I would have been a little upset if it had. But you know, right. it, it it just luckily it didn't come up. Right. Yeah. And uh, the one drop lineup makes a lot of sense. You know, peel off turn one for mm -hmm. searching your unisons, Sankaba yep. both for going for game and for dealing with your opponent's unisons, and yep. then uh, the intensifying power trunks for a little bit of crit. Now, mm -hmm. here's what's funny. Like, this is really cool. This is actually a very very core. Yamcha deck like there's a lot of Yamchas in this deck which yeah is kinda cool. yeah so, i think you you play like every Yamcha except for the, the vanilla actually which i thought was funny yeah it's pretty funny so lawless yeah. absolutely incredible um just just yep. the fact that he draws you turn after turn after turn like how many turns were you able to keep a lawless on the board and just accrue like crazy amounts of value uh there was there was one game i played him on turn two and then he stayed on the board until i won nice. i mean mo most games there so the reason lawless is so good is because you just choose not to attack with him right they have to devote some card to killing him and then that just triggers your bunny girl. So, uh, I mean, yeah, on average, Lawless is drawing two cards. Um, he can't, the, the fact that he can just tap two, swing, double strike 30K, um, you know, there's so many times that I'll just Lawless, swing lead, tap two, they're gonna end up having to discard, you know, one, two, maybe even three cards to out combo that, or, or it just makes them waste their negate. It's just super value. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the fact is exactly a battle too. Like they can negate, and then you don't, yeah. you don't even have to waste energy on that. Yeah, exactly. Really yeah. So and then so the reason I play the everybody's pal is that I figured Lawless was actually just so good. Obviously, I wanted to play more than four, but you can't actually do that. So I played like two of the next best thing. He's good. You always you want to tap out every turn in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe okay, maybe if you're playing against aggro turn two, you don't want to tap out, but usually you want to tap out every turn. Um, and playing the everybody's pal just lets you attack a unison on turn two or it lets you attack leader on turn two while also plussing because you can attack active mode battle cards with shinron on the board he can just attack like a one drop draw card and so he just he's less good obviously than the lawless but he still accumulates value uh over the course of a game right and, and then only two bunny girls kind of surprising did, did you ever wish you yep. had more or it was too good no okay so bunny girl is a card that because no one not not pe people aren't generally playing red in the meta right now it's pretty tricky once they realize uh bunny girl's a real card after game one uh literally everybody just plays around it games two and three mm -hmm. and so with your with like peel off with your leader with lawless you're filtering through your deck so much i usually just always had the one and then um uh, i i play one over on card two so i ended up cutting the third bunny girl for the one over on card gotcha that makes sense too yeah because I, I do agree yeah. that makes sense people will play around it after game one um that, mm -hmm. that's that's pretty good call there yeah so here is a lot of our burn stuff. Sun Goku, the pure hearted yep. and Yamcha at 100%. So obviously mm -hmm. the deck allows you to attack active mode battle cards, which is really, really good. So how yep. often did you win by burn? A lot. I mean, there were, there were they, like this deck allows you to play so tricky. I think I had a huge edge up because nobody knew what the deck did. Mm -hmm. So I would do like a lot of weird plays. So for example, like I was playing against yellow. I had Jiren Unison. He's a double strike. My, my opponent's at four life. I like swing in with the Jiren Unison. I just combo my entire hand except for Son Goku, the pure hearted. And like, I knew that he could out combo it, but I knew he wasn't going to because like my Jiren was like 75K and uh, he just took the two damage and I just immediately won with Son Goku because uh, he has deflect and then uh, whether you negate the attack or not, the auto still triggers. Right. So he's he's somewhat uninteractable. You can hit him with the Frieza, the, the counterplay Frieza, but I really think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty cool because like he doesn't have to kill the battle card, unlike yeah. uh, Yamcha at 100, yeah. which which is still good. But yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool how yeah. um, it just automatically triggers like that. So yesterday yeah. when I did the video and, and you commented on it, um, you know I didn't know your deck list. So mm -hmm. um, I one of the cool win cons I've seen is like playing you know the five drop. I think it's uh, Goku yeah. Savagery Awakened, mm -hmm. and um, that's a deflect win condition that says you, you just play it, you deal burn damage to your opponent, and then your leader will deal an additional damage if you have the unison in play, right? So mm -hmm. did you ever tinker around with that win con? Was it ever worth it or? Um, this was yeah better. like the very first it just costs five energy like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not paying five energy for anything unless right. it's the secret rare like you i don't think i ever got to five energy i don't think there was ever a game where i wanted it um like i said we've been playing i've been labbing it for like at least a month and, and some couple weeks now so there's like there's so few games where you ever even want to go to five energy it just never comes up
Gotcha. That makes sense. I, yeah. I was thinking maybe like a slow matchup, maybe like Invoker or maybe like uh, Sin. Yeah. But I guess I guess yeah. even against Sin, you could just attack them with pure heart as long as you have Sin Shenron on Unison. On the yeah, board, so. yeah. That's probably, yeah, exactly. that's probably fine. Now, and then I played two of the Yamcha because uh, Yamcha actually deals three damage. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he doesn't have Deflect hurts. Now you can also look at your opponent's hand with Shenron. Uh, <laughs> Take away their um, take away their counterplay, yeah. and then you can also get this 100% off of Bunny Girl. So I mean, it, he's play. I won games with him too. Um, he does have to kill the target though, so it's a little bit more tricky. Yeah, I mean, two seems like a good ratio because yeah. sometimes he will yeah. come up, you know, and, and you can revive him off Bunny Girl seems good too. Yep. So Desert Hyena, you know, just just mm -hmm. in testing when we're, when I was testing Red more in the beginning of the format, like he was a crazy card with Bunny Girl Bulma. So yeah, uh, how did this 100%. card perform? Yeah, I mean, that's you. he's generally your best target to get off of Bunny Girl. Uh, you only play two because you can, again, you filter your deck so much. Uh, you, since your leader looks at two and then puts the second one in the drop area, yep. uh, generally you won't choose him to make sure he's in your drop area. Um, and even then, I mean, against yellow or even against like uh, blue when they summon a Bune, he's pretty good against a Bune. He's good against Warcry. Uh, you just swing 30k and then he becomes a triple, uh, triple strike 40k. And you're like you're not comboing anything in. You might combo to 45, but if they don't negate his attack, he's like a 45k triple strike. It's gonna take a lot of cards for them to get over that. Um, so, but again, off of a, a Bunny Girl zero mana, yeah. yeah, he's a really good card for zero energy. Like it's so funny too how like there's not really any like a rival or anything we have to worry about nowadays uh, because a card like yeah. this back then would have been like kind of bad. And that kind of brings oh, me yeah, to the exactly. next question of foreseeing hit because yep. just a few formats ago, this card was considered not so great. Um, right. So, you know, I'm assuming like maybe blue, this card's not the best, but against no, other matchups, yeah. I guess you get his auto off and it's pretty good, huh? hundred. Yeah, so that's the thing too, is like you just have to like, don't be stupid, right? If they have a Zeno with six counters, I'm not playing for seeing hit. Right. But uh, this deck's actually really good at clearing unisons in my, you know, uh, that's why I play like the four cob, I play all the two drops. It's really good at clearing the unison. So there, there were many games where he's just valid. Against yellow, uh, you just look at their hand, you take their war cry, you take their super combo. He's really good. Against blue, it's half and half. Uh, every, you know, green is just good. Uh, and then I didn't play any red, so I would assume he's good against red. Yeah, um, man. I remember the good old days know. where you just you slam four for seeing hit, and it's the best and card ever. Red. red deck, yeah. So and funny. Then, yeah, and then in pan, he becomes a 25k. That, yeah, he's a really good card. And then uh, the Frieza Armory Born. So obviously a good secret from Mono Red. Did you ever try S4 Gogeta? Did you ever try yeah. Negative Energy Dragon Ball? Or did you ever yep. try like Smoke Dragon? Like what are your thoughts on those? Yeah, I, I tried all of those. Um, they're just, the fact that your leader swings and then he flips up a black card and it immediately goes to Grave and it's your secret rare just doesn't feel good. Makes sense. Um, and so I just played the red one. Um, I'm sure any, so Negative Energy Dragon Ball just isn't that good of a card uh, in general, in my opinion. Smoke Dragon, obviously a really good card, but uh, I didn't want to play, uh, you know, I didn't, having, what is it, 12 cards in drop can be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and then Gogeta, the SS4 Gogeta, again, like, that's also pretty good, but I feel like this freeze is better just because your leader can actually grab it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's, what, yeah. like, before they changed the Bardock Resolute ruling, that was one of the reasons, too, people don't, didn't really want to play Bardock Resolute in this deck because you can't, uh -huh. you can't grab it when you need it, which is unfortunate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So finishing up the main deck, two hidden power makes a lot of sense. Just going in for double yep. strike. The yeah. the four Weiss is pretty cool because you know obviously you're not playing a rival in this deck, but you know this can be a 20k combo. So was that just worth it over like a draw one super combo for you? Yeah. So the thing is that I'm I personally am a really defensive player, and this is uh, generally the best defensive. Uh, well, obviously you have the Zamasu one, but like this is a 20k super combo. It also works super well with your other cards. So like uh, let's say if I have a Jiren on board. They summon Raider's Warcry. Jiren negs at 10. They attack with their leader. I combo Whis and I just kill Raider's Warcry. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. You also have stuff like uh, Yamcha, Merciless Barrage. And then you have Wolf Fang Fist. So, like, you can do stuff like... Uh, like, one time uh, they played the go the seven drop Gotenks uh, <laughs> yeah, the yellow fusion. One. Yeah. yeah, the yellow one. And um, I Wolf Fang Fisted it. And then you still combo. And then you combo the Whis and it just dies. So... I mean, it, there, it's generally an effective way to remove stuff. And then it also works really well with your Yamcha at 100%. Uh, it combos for 20k, which makes uh, Yamcha to 25k. You swing on a 15k, combo Whis, it goes down to a 5k. And then, you know, it's it's really hard for them to out combo that when you start like shotgunning your hand into that as well. Very cool. That's pretty strong. And then just the one secret identity for some mass removal. And then yeah. um, just for the extra card lineup, Wolfang Fist, three after image makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. 
Let's yeah. go into the side deck. I'll let you just uh, walk us through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, real quick. I do want to make a point about... Uh, so when I said earlier, you generally want to tap out every turn. That's that's usually after you establish your unison. So Wolf Fang mm -hmm. Fist actually costs zero energy if you have a unison. Right. Uh, after image is a sparking. So it's not necessarily free in some games. You don't want a sparking. But it, you can play it for zero energy. You have the Whis. You have the Merciless Barrage. So there are so many times where like you'll have six cards in hand. And you can play every single one of them with zero energy. So it's it's perfectly reasonable to want to and then you throw bunny girl on top of that it's like it's perfectly reasonable to tap out every turn uh like turn three turn four because you you can play every single one of your defensive cards um even when tapped out and so that was one of the big reasons i like the deck because you don't lose any tempo by tapping out that's so and, interesting um, because uh like yeah. a lot of red decks they they want to keep two for topo they want to mm -hmm. keep two for the android 17 draft box negate um mm -hmm. that's that's pretty cool that's a pretty cool yeah. different take on the deck right and then uh yeah so the sideboard yeah. uh, finish up what you ever want to say and then just take us through okay. the sideboard uh well yeah so uh three dark power black mass hands it's kind of just like i feel like every every deck siding it right now it's really good against this that and the other there's so many decks it's good against you just side it in um two broly crown very specifically good against yellow um they're gonna want to uh leave two up for war cry or even bergamo uh once they realize uh you do side it in they start to play around it but that's okay because if if i'm playing against mono yellow and uh they leave one yellow energy up to play around the broly then it's like oh i don't even care because now you know you're not playing war cry anyway so right. um uh is that all you got was for aod and vagex and for i even cited against skillless uh you know because skillless has all them little 15k attackers um that one is that all you got was really good i honestly might think that's better than topo going forward um so i do side the three topos i never wanted to side them in again because i tap out every turn um and there was no deck that i felt like could effectively pressure me into wanting to play topo so i mean topo obviously has been good for so long but i feel like right now he's not necessary right right and then we have three crisis crusher pretty much just for skillless that deck's uh where that deck's really good and then the one m2 was for random stuff i decided in skillless it was fine i probably so i would actually moving forward i would cut the topo and cut the m2 i would side deck two max kamehameha for um shenron yellow uh the uh, sin shenron yellow deck yep and then i would add two denial of hope for other red matches very cool yeah no that makes a lot of sense yeah topo is a weird one because you know it's so strong just like on paper but it gets answered by so many things and it really hurts when that happens so yeah i mean it, it gets counterplayed too hard right now against uh um like aod they'll just 13 it yep, against yep. um blue has the trunks uh, for blue, it blue they can trunks it yeah it just and then you have to basically discard one for nothing um and so it's like something like is that all you've got might just be better right now because uh, is that all you got kills two things for the cost of topo killing nothing while also they can't uh counter counter your topo essentially right yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah. so uh awesome man thank you so much for deciding to uh do the video on the channel i do appreciate it any uh shout outs you want to get out there uh yeah no nah, just my homie jeff uh and then matt sublet's my uh you know one of my best friends we go to every event together uh he topped too so i mean it was it was a good event um i'm glad we could go awesome man glad to hear it thank you again and we'll see you next time all right bro have a good one